So, hello and welcome back. My name is Jennifer and I make stuff. And in today's video, I'm gonna continue with that dark academia style of interior that I actually did in my hallway. And this is exactly that kind of project because in this video, I'm going to give my key cabinet or key box a dark antique makeover. Because this key box is actually a project that I gave a makeover when I was uh, <laughs> when I was in that kind of farmhouse face, white paint and then dark brown stain on some areas. And that's exactly what happened to this one. The majority here is painted with white and then there are some spots here that are dark brown stain. And also you can see that I have this cowhide decorations here with some of these uh, furniture tags. But I pretty much have gone over that face. I still like some kind of farmhouse style, but I want to have it more of that darker style, more antique, more rustic, a little bit Victorian. So this one is going to be getting a complete makeover. So I'm going to have to remove some areas, maybe have to sand down some details, and then I'm going to give it a completely new paint job. And I feel that to get that kind of Victorian feel, I want to add some kind of ornaments. I have used some of these ornament molds when I gave my bed a complete makeover and I wanted to try out that kind of application but to some kind of smaller projects and actually I went to a second hand store uh, the other day and I found that they had these but the thing about these is the fact that these are very fragile pieces of plastic so if you're not careful they can easily break and also another thing is that the, since these are made of plastic that means that they can't be used around areas that are like rounded or if you want to add them to a corner you can't bend them around you have to add them to a flat area i wanted to see if i could maybe make a mold of my own of these ornament pieces that I have here. So I used this one. So this is just a regular modeling clay that just air dries. So this is the one that is called DAS, but you can use any modeling clay that you find works best for you. I wanted to make sure that I had a thick mold so I can make a deep impression into the actual clay. So I tried to focus on maybe making it evenly thick all around. But it all depends on what kind of thickness you need depending on the details that is in the ornament that you're going to use as the mold. So I decided to flatten the piece of clay so it gets sort of an even surface all the way around. And then I pressed down the plastic ornament piece onto the surface of the clay and pressed it as hard as I could until I could see that all the surface area was covered with all the details evenly. Then I let it set for as long as it would take for the clay to get more closer to a flexible state so it wouldn't be too soft but still wasn't too dry then I can actually remove this plastic ornament without ruining the design that is underneath and then after that I got this impression of the ornament piece on top of this this one is still in the process of drying but when this one has dried I'm going to go over with either Mod Podge or another thin water-based lacquer just so I have a protective surface on top of this mold and then I can reuse this one over and over again to make as many copies I want of these kind of designs of these ornaments and I'm going to see what kind of designs going to look the best on top of the surface of this key box here I'm just going to first of all play around with what the designs I want to have here and then I'm going to show you the preparations for giving this one as a new finish and a new paint job So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the doorknob and then I'm going to temporarily place some of these ornaments on top of the frame around this key box and get sort of an idea what I can actually make of this design that I have here. Have in mind that this is just temporarily and I'm going to change the design as we go further on in the process. So the next step is to remove the cowhide. So first I'm going to remove the furniture tags that keeps it in place. And then I'm going to rip off this cowhide because it's actually glued with some contact adhesive. And you can see that some of the backside of the cowhide is actually stuck onto the surface of this key box. So I'm going to use some rough grit sandpaper just to remove any of these fussy leftover pieces from the cowhide. I'm going to go over with the same rough grit sandpaper over the painted surfaces of the key box so the painting process is going to be much easier later on in the process. 
Then it was time to make some custom made ornament pieces and I also did cast some of these pearl boards. There's a round frame on one of my mirrors. So I just added a little bit of clay into one of these molds and then I'm going to let it dry until I get to a flexible stage where I can easily just shape it into place. And when I have decided where I want to add this ornament piece, I just add a little strip of glue down and just attach the clay ornament piece and then shape it into place with a little bit of water. I just want to mention that I had a little bit of an issue with some of these molds because I was a little bit impatient so I didn't let the molds dry completely. So I had to be a little bit creative and use some other things or decor pieces to fill some of these empty areas. So what I decided to do was use some of these furniture tags, trim them down so they weren't too long and then I'm just gluing them into place. And then to create a pearl board because the pearl board that I had made previously wasn't really good enough for me. I decided to use some of these decorative rivets and just attach them into place by pressing them down using a screwdriver. And here you can see some of the molds attached into place and you can see that I have added some of these furniture tacks and some more of these decorative rivets in areas that I felt like I wanted to have larger pearls in some of these pearl looking boards. It still felt like there were too many empty areas on this design so I came up with the idea to use some of these barbecue sticks or skewers just to make some sort of edges or frames around some of these furniture tags and some of these decorative rivets just to create some nice looking edges around them so it looked more like a frame or a board but also to fill some of those empty areas and makes it look more like it made more sense and was a cohesive looking design. So I just trimmed them down added some glue and then just hold them together with some clamps and then when they are dry I just remove the clamps and I have some nice looking frames around all of the rivets and the furniture tacks. And I also use some filler putty if I wanted to blend in all of the edges to the other designs all the way around the frame of the key box. And then I decided to design the sides of the key box with some of these furniture tags just to make the design repeat itself all over the key box so it had a matching design that made all of the pieces come together much better. And I also used some of these metal book corners that you can use for a book cover and I just glued them down in place. And I did decide to repeat these book cover themes with some larger metal book corners in the middle piece in the front part of the key box. I still felt like there were too many empty areas in the design of the key box, so I decided to fill those areas with a thin strip of clay and then I went over it with one of those tools for lacing when you're working in leather just to make some interesting stitch looking cross patterns to the clay and add some more interesting details to the entire design of the key box. So this is going to be the design that I'm going with. I feel like I don't want to add anything else. These are supposed to be those kind of corners that you can use on a book cover. And I also decided to include that element here so it looks more like they belong together. So these details here are similar to these ones over here. So it looks like the 
pattern is repeating in different areas so it looks like this design matches and all of that and i also decided to go for more a simpler pattern here where i used this this one is supposed to be for those kind of when you're supposed to do some lacing on leather you can use this one or you can use it for sewing but this one was perfect for adding these details here that i could do in sort of a cross pattern but instead of doing lines that go straight like that i had more of that kind of stitch looking pattern and also the fact that this one looks a little bit worn looking like the details are starting to get a little bit removed like wear and tear on it so it's going to include more of that antique effect and the same thing goes with all of the other details that i have here some of the clay here has a little bit of cracks in them and some of these corner pieces looks like they have some parts looks a little bit like they have wear and tear on them and all that I am, however, going to go over all of these clay parts with a thin layer of the Mod Podge. Yeah, so it has sort of a protective finish on them and it also is going to make the clay less porous because I feel that maybe the paint finish might look different on these parts if they doesn't have a protective finish on them because they might suck up the paint much more. Yep, so that's pretty much it and I'm going to add just a protective finish to all of these clay parts and then we can finally start painting this guy. So as a base coat for this key box, I'm going to use this Rust-Oleum Graphite Shock Paint, which is a very deep grey shock paint. It's not like close to black, I would have to say this is more anthracite grey, it's a very deep, deep grey tone. And you're going to see here that I'm using this round bristle brush and at first I thought that I might have to go over with two layers, but it turns out that just one layer seems to be fine. I went over with one thick layer of shark paint, but I also made sure that I was distributing it evenly so it wouldn't be too thick in some areas because I still want the details in all of the ornament pieces and other details to show through. Once the shock paint had dried, I used this black shock paint and I just went over with a thick watered down wash all over the key box and this actually gave the surface of the key box a very cool interesting texture since the areas where the watered down shock paint were running in through were deeper in tone while the highlights were getting a brighter finish. It also gave it a weathered, grainy looking structure and textures to some of the details. Then it was time to enhance all of these details by doing some dry brush and I'm using this mixture of the warm chocolate and some deep taupe and I'm just using dry brush with as little paint as possible on an old damaged bristle brush and I'm just carefully brushing it all over each highlighted surface of the details. I also off camera added some texture using the Mod Podge on some of the sides just to add some more interesting details and these were enhanced with the dry brush technique. Just this layer of dry brush made such a huge improvement because as you can see there are so many details that are highlighted here and especially all of these textures that I have made with some of the Mod Podge here. So I'm going to try and include a little bit of green into this because since I'm going to use this finishing wax that is in a gold shade, it's a warm gold, I think I want to maybe give the illusion that this is an antique bronze structure or bronze cabinet or something that has aged over a long period of time so it starts to get to this kind of greenish oxidized shade. I'm just gonna try and see if I can scrape some of this pan pastel into this mixture that I made here. I'm gonna try to make sure that I'm not overpowering with the green but I'm gonna see what I feel about this effect. If I really love it then maybe I will go over with a lot of the green. So I'm just gonna do this mixture here and then start playing around and see what kind of effects that I can get. 
Alright, so to create this patternized copper effect, I just scraped down some of this patholo green pan pastel into this mixture that I made before for the dry brush. Then when I was happy with the mixture, I started to lightly tap this green mixture on the surface of the key box. Because this made sure that I could build up with as little paint as possible to more and more of the green until I felt like I got to that effect that I was going for. And like I said earlier, I didn't know how much green that I wanted to add, but I felt that doing this random application made it look more authentic, like it really had this patternized look to it. So it looked like it was copper from the beginning and then turned more to this greenish turquoise shade. And then to enhance more of that metallic effect, I went over with the golden wax. But you're gonna see later that I actually wasn't really that happy with this yellowish tint of this gold. So you're going to see that I'm going to use this orangey tinted mixture instead, which is also some different shades of soft pastel in some reddish tones and some orange tones to get more of that copper tint to it and a little bit of a rust effect. Even though this is not iron, this is copper, but I felt like it enhanced more of those kind of antique features. And I mainly focus on those areas where I had added the golden wax, and so I had more of an orangey red tint to enhance the copper effects. Then I just went back and forth between the orange tints and the bluish green tints to enhance more and more of that kind of patternized copper effect. I'm obviously not going for a hyper realistic look, but I'm just playing around with some of these shades and just get some sort of antique interesting finish to the entire key box. Then to make sure that the pan pastel doesn't move around when I'm adding the wax finish, I just spray the entire surface with some fixative just to make sure that they are locked in place and doesn't smudge around. I just went over with some of this liquid furniture wax using a sponge, but instead of brushing with the sponge, I'm just doing some dabbing techniques on the surface just to make sure that I won't accidentally move some of these pastels that I have added to create this copper effect. I felt like the finishes muted down some of the colors, so I decided to go back and forth between some of the green pants pastel, some golden wax, some orange pastels, and I also wanted to include more of that blue tint because I felt like it was getting a little bit too green. I wanted to have more of those blue shades mixed in so I get more of a sea green or turquoise tinted patina to this copper effect. So I did this back and forth until I was happy with the finished result.
So this is how the finished result turned out. It's definitely far from what I imagined it was going to look like when I first had an idea in my head of what kind of design or style I was going for. And during the process I came up with new and new ideas on how to decorate this one even more to make it look more and more closer to authentic to the style that I was going for. And that's why I, during the process, realized that I could use these furniture tags and some of these decorative rivets and then also some of these wooden barbecue sticks and just play around with details that I knew could enhance the illusion that this is some kind of craftsmanship made a couple of hundred or so years ago. I was thinking that maybe instead of thinking that this cabinet is made out of wood, Maybe I could think that this one was once upon a time made of complete copper or it's something that was made of some kind of stone but was decorated with some copper details. That's when I figured out what kind of application I can do with some of the golden wax and then figuring out that I can actually use some of the pan pastels that I have to enhance more that bluish green patina look that copper gets over time. Then just working in all the layering process of that and thankfully going over with some Mod Podge gave it more of that kind of old crusty feel and texture to the entire surface so it doesn't look like for example the decorative rivets and some of the furniture tags looks brand new they look like they are very old and the surface isn't even anymore and they are starting to crumble to pieces or fall apart so maybe it's not a hundred percent like you know making it look like authentic copper patina but i just played around with that color scheme i just wanted to have more color into some of the details that i have in my hallway instead of just going for those earthy tones because i i want to have something more interesting something that stands out but after seeing the finished result of this key cabinet i feel that i want to do more of this kind of effect to even bigger projects so this one was just for me to try out what kind of style and effects and textures that i can go with and the color variations color combinations so definitely having this one as a guide is going to help me a lot more now with some of the other details that I'm planning. So I may not go that route of going for that kind of patina effect, but definitely I want to try out some of this effect of adding furniture tags, maybe decorative rivets, to making it look like it has that kind of craftsmanship. But with all that being said, this is the finished result and I'm super happy with how it all turned out. And maybe you got some ideas or inspirations to do something like this, either to an old key box that you may have, or if you have some other kind of object that you want to give this kind of makeover. If you have something that is made of wood, then you definitely can use these kind of rivets and furniture tags and just uh, either press them in place or hammer them into place. And then just doing these kind of steps that I did with chalk paint or using Mod Podge. Get these kind of different variations of textures to make it look like it's an old antique object. Then definitely you can play around with whatever colors that you have. I just went for this kind of bluish green route because I went the direction of thinking about copper patina. But definitely if you have some other colors that you want to work with then definitely do you. This is all up to you what you want to do. So yeah that's it for this video and I'll see you in the next one.